a little bit about our design process and what um, what we look for in terms of spatial data. Um, so, like I said before, um, a lot of our most of our maps are custom custom jobs, and uh, for this one I'll show you now. A coworker of mine at UIC, uh, she's Chinese, and she really was interested in uh, a map of the seven warring states. Um, so this is pre Qin Dynasty, essentially before the first empire. Um, and so uh, she asked if I could make something <laughs> that resembles that, and uh, this is where I started. So you know, there's a lot of really terrible maps online that I found. Um, in doing my research. So once really, you know, I was trying to find what the borders might look like. Um, and as you can see here, four different maps out of several others that I found. Really, uh, you know, they don't really, they have this kind of basic form, um, but really there's no real across the board consensus as to what these borders actually were. Obviously no one was there, so it's all conjecture. Um, and so that was kind of, you know, this is where I started, you know, what it might, you know, what, what's it going to turn into? It's kind of a big question. And so um, these are two examples of the, the type of data available. So on the right you have, uh, this is polygon vector data essentially representing, uh, these are like rivers and lakes and uh, large estuaries and deltas and whatnot. And so uh, this, on the right, this is actually uh, it looks pretty crude at this level, but we're talking about a continental-wide data set. So, uh, you know, as we'll see in a second, when we zoom out, that, that kind of fidelity is not going to be apparent. Um, so, uh, but it runs the gamut of really pretty com uh, complete data to really terrible, just a, one single line for that river. And so that's really not what I would want. So we're going to stick with uh, what's on the right here. Okay. So this is a very crude export um, from ArcGIS, and just wanted to kind of illustrate uh, the different layers we're looking at here. Um, it looks terrible, which is you know kind of the point. Um, <laughs> so we have you know uh, four different country uh, or three you know, Taiwan's in there. So we have country borders, we have the rivers and lakes and streams, and then I basically digitized uh, the the borders uh, from kind of, you know, just kind of a, an amalgamation of all the maps that I saw online. And this seems to be my interpretation. Of this. I'm no historian, but this is, what I, this is what I came up with. Uh, so cleaned out a little, it's just a little clearer to see. And so uh, since this is depicting an ancient kind of landscape, I wanted to go for kind of a, you know, kind of a rustic look, earth tones, maybe like a like a parchment sort of palette. I don't know. And my um, question is, yeah. um, you said you amalgamated those maps. Did you look at like, primary sources to see which ones were? I didn't really do like a whole lot of in-depth research. Um, and I, I basically just used those images online. There were many more, but like it, and I'll get, get into it a little bit later and kind of my rationale for what I did here. Um, but really, there wasn't any. It wasn't super scientific. Really. Let's just put it that way. Um, and so this is just a little, a little closer uh, look at the data. Um, as you can see, it's, it's pretty complex. All these uh, islands at the end. So here is, you know, here's a map, and it's showing what we want. But it's really not really what I was going for. I want something a little bit better. So I wanted to add. Uh, an elevation layer here. This is a digital elevation model. Essentially, it's a pixelated um, image, and each pixel represents a uh, particular elevation. And so I was able to render that in ArcMap and then export it into Illustrator. And then I added the symbols for uh, each uh, kingdom, as well as the text, which reads uh, seven morning states. And then this is, so right here, this is kind of showing um, how the elevation data dictated the borders. And uh, there's kind of a natural kind of like boundary here. Um, it might be hard to see, but it gets really mountainous beyond the kind of the darker area. And so I just basically interpreted that as the, the natural boundary of, of that particular border. And then I added uh, just a nice little border um, to it, uh, finishing touches on. 
I'll just a little closer look at it. And uh, that's basically it. So that's uh, that's the process, more or less. Um, obviously, it's a little more complex than that. So it took me a while to find data that I wanted. I, I probably used five or ten sources in the end, and I picked the best two or three out of that. Um, because it just again, the quality just you know is is very uh, different. So that's pretty much all I had. Uh, I'm just going to send it over to Taylor now to finish up. Yeah. Is there more? Um, I mean, there's more, but uh, if you want to go. Through. That's right. Yeah, I won't go into this. We can just start taking questions now. Um, but I'll just scroll through these. This is an example of when Adam's talking about uh, digitizing stuff, like the uh, trellises there, cross hatch there. And that that's not in, it's not publicly available. Like that's where and photograph comes in and makes the data better. Um, same goes for building footprints that are crooked or non-existent. Go and look at aerial and draw lines around the aerial. So pretty tedious process, and I'm glad I haven't had to do that <laughs> all of Chicago, like Adam and Jose did. Um, yeah, and then there's uh, just a lot of applications. I mean, I know a lot of you are probably familiar with GIS. Uh, some of you might not be familiar with it at all. But you can really get a ton of data that otherwise is incomprehensible. Like, take a spreadsheet, turn it into a map, and pictures are a thousand words. So um, this is some of my older work in looking at transportation assets businesses, um, helping communities and community groups and real estate agents and developers look at vacant or underutilized land and all of the nearby assets, demographics, and then here's an example of the data, a big vendor, Esri, which is like the Microsoft of GIS. Uh, they also provide a lot of data, uh, demographics, traffic counts, stuff like that. So uh, that's pretty much it.